Hello and welcome. This is your host, Lisa Neller, and you are listening to a Bliss Buddy Chat, a self-care and healthy living conversation worth listening to because what we bring to the table are self-care strategies to make life more enjoyable. BringMeBliss.com is a self-care and healthy living blog for women. It's about helping women achieve utter joy and contentment in spite of their trials and circumstances. Our guests have an expertise in the self-care space, and we are bringing you real stories, tips, strategies, and solid advice for achieving a better life. Our content delivers information that addresses mind, body, and spirit. We promote getting in touch with all areas of yourself for better understanding and developing skills to live life intelligently. We want to help you reduce your stress and workload so you can live life to the fullest. This conversation is for you to learn better strategies for living well, eating well, moving well, and working well. Living out the second half of life with gusto, meaning, and purpose is what we are about. I'm interested in real stories from real people who have gone through rough stuff and have come out the other side. Each Bliss Buddy conversation includes myself and my Bliss Buddy, a real woman who helps bring joy to others with her spirit, her heart, her life, and her work. Today's Bliss Buddy is Amy Carney, a former newspaper journalist and editor from India. Anna. Amy currently writes on her blog, Amy Carney, online and print outlets about intentional parenting and family travel. She is also a model with the Agency Arizona and is training to be a sports life coach through Patterson Sports Ventures in hopes of working with NHL families to help with their transition from the game into retirement. Amy is a woman of influence for Mass. Mother's Awareness of School-Aged Kids, and is also an advocate for local foster children here in Arizona. She and her former NHL playing husband of 18 years have 13-year-old triplet sons and a 12-year-old daughter. Now, I, I just want to say that he's not a former husband. <laughs> he's a former <clears throat> NHL player, okay? So we get that straight. <laughs> Excuse me. So I want to welcome you, Amy. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks for having me, Lisa. Yeah, so Amy, you have been married, <clears throat> excuse me, I have a little coughing going on here. You've been married to an NHL player for a long time. Uh, now, I understand that there are some challenges that come with being the wife of a high-profile athlete. Can you tell us about some of those challenges and how you dealt with them? Um, okay, um, yes, it's interesting how I ended up marrying a an NHL player when I'd never been to a hockey game in my life and um, not a big hockey fan. So that proved interesting right from the beginning. But um, obviously being married to a professional athlete is a blessing in itself, um, but comes with many personal challenges as we are forced to move around uh, quite a bit and really have no say in, in that. Um, so I would say that's the number one challenge in, in you know, being married to a professional athlete. And then um, secondly is losing my own career because of the intensity of his. Um, I had to kind of give up, you know, my writing and my modeling and everything to kind of follow him around and stay home with our four children and, um, and just kind of still find, find my way and continue, continue to remember, you know, my importance and who I am and what I bring to the table. So um, I've, I've learned a lot through those uh, 18 years, you know, in, in the National Hockey League. Um, I, got, I, would, I would say I got really good at, at um, learning about myself, and get, I got really good at building a community of um, positive women around me. And um, I started a few different businesses that, that I could move around with and that were great avenues, and you know, that enabled me to meet people. And I think that was that was a huge key um, to my success and being happy in, the, in that lifestyle. So how did you learn about yourself? Did you was there were there some spiritual practice or um, you just learned by by trial and error as you went along? How how did that transpire? Um, um, I think. <laughs> Um, well, with much experience, but I think with each move, I mean, we started out in Chicago and we both had big careers and um, 
you know, getting traded five days after we got married to Phoenix, Arizona was a huge um, eye opener for me. Okay. Um, I went from the big city to the desert and um, I realized right away that I was in charge of my own happiness and that change is not always a bad thing, you know, and to look at change as, as a positive and what was I going to, um, you know, what was I going to do with that? I could sit here and be negative, or I can, you know, I can, I can take it as an opportunity and a blessing and, um, and, and figure out, you know, what I wanted to do with that blessing. So, um, and I think that every team and every time we get, tr we got traded just further that belief for me and, um, and, and just looking at, at change as an opportunity, I think was a huge, um, you know, huge positive for me and for my family, because it, it's important for me to be happy and whole, you know, you know, in order for everyone else to, to, to feel good about things too. Yeah, of course. So I have to imagine that you ran into a lot of other wives of NHL players and, um, either commiserated with them or help, you know, supported each other, lifted each other up, that kind of thing. So, um, you did have community there, right? Definitely. Definitely. When you, each team has its, its group of women and, um, and everyone's kind of been through it. So it's nice to, to have that. And then it was always nice if you would go to a team with, with a, a leader, a woman who was, had been there, done that, and to kind of, kind of help you along. Um, but that, depending on the team depended on the community it wasn't always you know there for you so i needed other ways to to find that community if if it wasn't available but um it was kind of interesting because my husband always when he moved he jumped right onto a team with you know doing exactly what he'd been doing and i was kind of left to to find my way and um the <laughs> wide community was a great place to start but I also found um, other avenues so I could surround myself with women in all, all aspects of my life. Cool. So you have sons and a 12 year old daughter and I have to, I'm not sure I'm doing the math right, but let's say that's four kids in about 18 months. Is that right? That's exactly right. <laughs> Okay, well, I always tell people if they have more than two, they're really ambitious because I only had two, but to have three at a time um, and then have a fourth one. Wow. So that in itself had to pose some challenges for you. So how did you manage all of that? Absolutely. Um, the interesting, <laughs> most interesting part of that is that when my triplets were born here in Arizona, um, September 8th, 2001, um, my husband actually got traded when they were five days old. So um, having triplets was a challenge in itself, but having him leave and um, move to Anaheim, the Anaheim Mighty Ducks team when they were five days old was really the biggest challenge, I, I believe. Oh, but, my um, goodness. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so you, but, but I think that's the big, the key is that we're presented with challenges in life and it's what we, we do with that challenge. So luckily my, my mom quit her job in Indiana and she, came right away to live with me and help me through the first three months with the kids and help me transition to moving over to California. And, um, and then I, then I just made my way from there. But yeah, then when I got pregnant, when the triplets were nine months old, <laughs> that really um, added another challenge, but I got a daughter after the three boys and we wanted four kids. So why not knock it all out in a year in a year and a half? And um, <laughs> That's awesome. So um, now are they all into sports and you're running in, you know, a million yes. different directions or are they all doing the same thing or what are they doing? You no, know, two, of, two of our triplets um, do exactly the same thing. They love baseball, basketball, hockey. Um, so those two are usually on the same. But then our third, he uh, retired from most sports and he does uh, music and art and a lot of science competitions and academics. So he brings a totally uh, fresh, um, new, new, you know, way of thinking in life for us. And then our daughter is also in competitive sports. So three athletes and an academic. Cool. Keep us, keep <laughs> I'm sure it keeps you mighty busy. <laughs> All right. I was intrigued to hear that your family took a six month hiatus from living here in Arizona to go out on the road 
for, I think you said six months. Yes. So tell us how that came to be. Like what, how, where did that come from? I want to know where that came from. Also where you went, and then we'll get into the, some of the challenges of being on the road away from home and with your four kids. Okay. So, um, well, since we were just talking about the busyness of four kids, that's exactly why we decided to pull out of um, the busyness and take our kids on the road in a motor home around the United States. Um, it's something we talked about when the kids were little. I think everybody has these dreams that they envision, you know, that they would love to do with their kids and, um, and their spouse or their family, whoever it is. And then somehow you get to that point and you really get nervous and question, like, do I really want to do that? Am I really willing to do that? And um, my husband had taken a coaching job with the Chicago Blackhawks the past three years. Uh, and that put him on the road every weekend and put me alone with the kids juggling all their activities. And um, one day we just said, what are we doing? Is this what we want to be doing? You know, is this, is this, is that how we want to be living with our family? And we decided, no, no, we were going to make that dream happen. We were going to do what we had envisioned and pull the kids out of school, pull them off sports. Um, he had to quit his job um, with the Chicago Blackhawks. And we just committed to spending that time together and reconnecting as a family. And it was awesome. I mean, it was definitely challenging, but I'm so proud of us that we, that we actually did that because it wasn't something that was easy, you know, it was, um, but we, we would, I mean, highly recommend following your dreams. Um, because well, I was say it was all, it's all here when you come back, the school, the sports and the busyness of life is still here. So. Well, what great memories did, did you journal during that time? Take notes? Like this is what we did. Um, I, I did. That's why I actually started my blog. Um, I started my blog to to um, talk through our tr our entire trip. So on my blog, just amycarney.com, you can go back and read every inch of our trip. Um, we were sp sponsored by KOA, so I got to um, you know freelance from the road, which was hugely important for me to have a purpose on the road um, mm -hmm. for myself. Just Set myself up for success um and we just i just had a ball riding from the road and um everything we experienced that's so cool so what were some of the challenges can you can you think of you know what something particular that was annoying or difficult that you really had to work through cooking picture, or whatever you know <laughs> can you just picture living in a, a small amount of space with three teenage boys and a tween daughter, I mean, is a, is a challenge in itself. But um, I think that was the point of it is that um, is just to live in this tiny amount of space with nothing. I mean, you know, with limited resources, with limited clothing, with limited everything. And to be like, we are fine. We, you know, and great outdoors was outside our doorstep everywhere we went and a new experience. And just to see our kids be, be, be kids and um, oh, I'm not telling you challenges though I guess that's all positives um, the challenges um, I was worried about the homeschooling part uh, mm -hmm. because I never set out to really homeschool I wanted to more unschool um, but it was I was a little nervous about pulling them out half a year of sixth and seventh grade um, just because you know the pressures that we have in school now and um, that was a huge thing I didn't know for sure if we were doing the right thing um, and then it was challenging, um, challenging, definitely cooking and doing laundry and not having access to all the things we do on a normal day in our own homes. Um, but it's kind of great to learn to acclimate and to, you know, just do things differently and know you can be fine. And I got very used to laundromats and um, I kind of miss now being home and just only having one washer and dryer when I had to go and knock knock out all of our laundry ones. <laughs> That's so interesting. I love that. Now, I don't know if you can, I, I'm assuming you can see the, the picture in the background where, how I'm interviewing you, but that's the inside of a motor home. <laughs> so um, I put that there on purpose, but anyway. All right. Well, you know, this is the self-care and healthy living blog for women. So what, what I want to know is what are some of the self-care 
that combined with what brings you bliss. So they could be one and the same, but um, you know, what are some of those things that you do to take care of yourself? Um, well, I fully believe that self care is extremely important as a woman, as a wife and as a mother who we just constantly are giving to others. Um, that it's just as important to give to ourselves and balance all of that out. So for me, I, f I know like just love and happiness brings me bliss. I love um, authentic community. I love spending time with my friends and family. Um, my love language is quality time. So if you're not sure what your love language is, I highly recommend the five love languages book. And there's a test online. And just to start figuring out what your needs are and um, and like surrounding myself with positive and inspiring people always just brings me up and getting out in nature just if you know I start to feel stressed about things I just take myself outside and hop on my bike or just just get out in the fresh air and reacquaint myself you know with the beauty just to remind me of all my blessings so it's not not too difficult just keep it simple <laughs> that's awesome Okay, so um, what can a woman do right now, let's say in the next 24 to 48 hours uh, to take better care of herself? And you can choose like any woman or maybe someone, a, a NHL wife or whatever, just one little piece of advice, like do this now and in 24 to 48 hours, you're gonna find a little bit more peace and comfort, happiness and bliss. Yeah. Um, well, like, like you had said, I'm uh, part of a sports life coach training right now um, under mm -hmm. Carlette Patterson, who I just adore and um, learning so much through her. And what, what I learned is, and what I would ask women to do is just get out a journal and like define what success is to you. What does success mean to you? And then what is significance to you? What, what, because those are different for every person. But to kind of think about that and then see how you're living life according, according to that. Um, we have a tool that we use. It's, a, it's kind of a time energy management tool where you just kind of go through your day, jot down how you're spending your time, and then kind of stat each thing that you're doing in your day, like from a 10 being amazing to a 1, not so much, you know, and, and, uh, and try and make sure that you're kind of living in an 8 to 10 zone. And if you're not, see how you can bring up those other, you know, other ones to, to a higher 8 to 10 stat. But just kind of start looking at your daily life and, um, and if you're living how you want to be living. And if not, see what changes you can start, small changes you can start making to do that. That's awesome. Great advice. I love that. Journal. Define what success means to you and writing down how you spend your time and try to come up into the eight to ten zone, which is, you know, more towards the uh, blissful side of living. And of course, I think, you know, I believe we have a choice in how, you know, how we spend our time and, um, you know, and how we look at life and all of that. So that's wonderful. Right. Um, cause there's one, there's one piece of it. Cause I find in my day, there's a lot of things I'm doing that I really would rather be doing other things, right. As a mother, and, you know, and you're doing a lot of uh, behind the scenes work, but look at that as, you know, kind of wind sprints, cardio work that kind of you need to be doing and you're, you know, because it's part of our role, but, um, it kind of gets you to the other, to the other, you know, amazing 10, 10 parts of your day. You don't want your entire day, day to feel like cardio and that you're, only doing things for other people. You want to make sure you are getting 10 moments into each and every day. Okay, that's fantastic. Now you said you're training under somebody's and you're, you kind of cut out there for a second. Did you say Carla? What was her name? Her name is Carlette Patterson. Her website is just www.carlette.com. And if, if you go to my website, you can, her, um, our logo is right there on the front page. You can click right on that and learn more about it. Okay, so um, so you really have a desire. It's in your heart to work with women, uh, particularly who are uh, married to NHL players, correct? Or any kind of sports, uh, high profile sports person. And uh, you want to help those women. So how are you going to be helping those women? And how can they contact you or get in touch with you? Just
Okay. Buy it at amycarney.com. Uh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. All, all um, ways to contact me are on there. My so all my social media and email and and all of that. But I wouldn't say I'm just looking to work with the NHL community. Um, I feel there's a big need there, so that's why I'm you know I'm targeting there. But my why I'm doing that is because I feel like a lot of women give up themselves um, that have a high profile husband, regardless of you know what that means. Um, mm -hmm. because it's easy to do, but the problem is one day with an athlete, it's done. Their job is over. You know, they're, it's going to end and you need to have something for yourself and feel, you know, you already want to have something going on for yourself so that you're, you're not feeling the pain of his retirement as well, that because you put your entire existence into his. So that's my goal is to help these women, you know, figure out what their passion is what they bring to the table, what they want to be doing, so that when his career is over, they know what they want to be doing. And they feel they have a place and they're not going to, you know, fall into depression because the the NHL life is over. They've got, they're going to be excited to move on and because they've got something else to give and do. Well, I love that you carry uh, such a positive torch, you know, and um, I know you're going to help these women and um, it's a very exciting thing to um, to bring uh, women more confidence and happiness in their lives. So I want to thank you, Amy, for sharing your stories here and um, giving us a resource where these women can go to get some assistance and support and encouragement. So uh, thank you so much for being with me. And I, I'm looking forward to hearing more about what you're going to be doing with with these women. So please keep me posted. I will. I will. And I thank you so much for having me. You bet, Amy. Have a great day. We'll talk soon. You too. Bye. Bye-bye.